I have done research um, that focuses on um, different philosophers who have explored um, the role that people play um, in making their societies more democratic. I have focused on philosophers that ask very provocative questions about the legitimacy of governments, even in so-called democracies. Because in a lot of democracies, um, in fact, governments don't pay very close attention to large subsets of the population. And at a certain point, that raises a question. Um, to what extent can they uh, be taken seriously as democratic states if they are not paying very close attention to the expressed interests of the people. The first um, research project that I engaged in uh, on this subject was um, an exploration of the concept of the public sphere. The public sphere is f basically defined as um, the private citizens coming together voluntarily um, to collectively assess their uh, interests and will. Very influential German philosopher, Jürgen Habermas, quite possibly the most influential philosopher uh, alive today in the world, or in, and non-controversially amongst them. <laughs> he would be on the top ten list. And one of his um, biggest interests was the public sphere. What I did was I looked at, and this uh, is in a book called Unbounded Publics, which was published in 2008, I looked at um, his theory of the public sphere and I attempted to produce a new one that was markedly different than his. One of the overarching mm -hmm. um, interests that I have is in different ways of speaking. Sometimes, sometimes you have to do something that doesn't look at all like speaking in order to have a rational conversation. I'm now looking at a completely different um, area in social and political philosophy. I'm looking at French, um, postmodern, and uh, post-World War II theory. And particularly, my new work focuses on a, um, a, 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 a theorist named Guy Debord. Um, I ch I'm choosing to look at Guy Debord because Guy Debord was enormously influential in France in May and June of 1968 when the country erupted into a rebellion that was called by the government the worst rebellion since the Paris Commune. I published a number of articles on the, uh, the, the significance of Guy Debord and have a book coming out in June of 2011 which is going to be a, um, a book-length study of, the, of, of Guy Debord if you really want to deal with the problems of the real world, you have to understand where they come from. Why do people do the things they do? Why do people not only propose the policies that they pr propose, different people proposing different policies, but why do pe different people um, um, find them more or less uh, offensive? Well, that is best explained if we can look at the range of ideological perspectives, we can look at the range of worldviews, where did they come from, how are they shaped, how did we get them. Philosophy says, let's think critically through and do the hard work of inquiry. And, and so I think it's absolutely critical. Um, I think if we had a more philosophical society and a less ideological society, we would be far better off.